Channel 6, Sunday the 5th, on Channel 6 at approximately 5.30 p.m. Six or seven. Of course, sorry, my apologies, Channel, channel seven. 7. A lot has been happening this week, and I thought we should discuss those issues. Uh, we've had the Local Government Commission now being appointed, Guyana admitted to the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, an international body that is designed to bring transparency to the extractive industries, including oil and gas, forestry, coal and diamond, bauxite, etc. We've also had discussions um, topically, the collective bar, free collective bargaining, the PSU and the teachers union uh, have been in the news this week. As you know, the teachers had threatened to strike, President Granger then intervened, um, the teachers backed off because uh, certain, of certain commitments being made. And perhaps very big news of all, the National Assembly, after a three months break, will be resuming sometime tomorrow, and then they'll probably take another slight break and work a couple of weeks and then go off for Christmas. So the, I, I thought the best person to discuss some of these issues is a friend of this program, Mr. Raymond Gaskin. Raymond, welcome to Plato. Thank you for having now, me. Now, I've identified a number of issues there. Um, you left out GCOM. I, I, did li I did leave out GCOM Article 161. I knew you were going to raise it. Um, yeah. What would you say would, was the hottest news this week? Uh, the, the, the unilateral appointment by the president of um, former Judge Justice uh, Patterson as chairman of GCOM and all the letter writers i uh, been writing about it all the time. Everybody's a big lawyer now. Everybody's a big expert on 1611 and 1612, and they've been writing. And now well, I don't think the public, every, every, the public is fully, so maybe you want, you want to say once what, what it is all about. Um, but before we get into it, what about the other items? Do you think they're, they're newsworthy? Yes, of course. And then, uh, of course, the, the big problem is uh, we're in November month, so next month we have this problem of the guys who uh, workers going off, many thousands of them. But this is a big problem for them, for their livelihood, and for the, the company, and for the country. And then the question of the economy, which is at a standstill. The economy is at a standstill now. Yeah, but, but is, is that correct? The IMF has published their article for um, consultation. The government of Ghana has, uh, is not in favor of its publication. The IMF has merely released it. There is still some growth in the economy. So the why, why would you say it's a standstill? Well, we talk Here about... Real we, GDP has increased. We talk about that a lot, ab about these, these uh, indices that the World Bank looks at. GDP growth, exchange rate, and Interest inflation. Rate. Those are the things that the World Bank looks at. I don't look at those things. They look at three things. Them and the minister, they talk about macroeconomic stability. Once you get these three things right, you're okay. I don't look at it. I don't look at those things. I have a different way of looking at the economy. But why are those things not very important? They're, because they're if, imp the, if the economy at a broader level of doing well is doing well, mm -hmm. isn't they, is they at the micro level, wouldn't it be doing well as well? No, not necessarily. Because GDP growth, the GDP growth figure is, a, is, a, is an arithmetic number arrived at. Uh, from how much thousand ounces of gold produced and exported and so on to Canada and Australia and all of that. It really doesn't mean much it, because it's just an arithmetic statistical number. It has none to do with, with the livelihood of people, with joblessness, with the standard of living, with employment, with, 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 with anything. It's just a statistical number. So my way of thinking, it's good that we can record and in, an increase in output of gold, but it, to my way of thinking, it doesn't mean much. You still don't have jobs in this place. You don't have any improvement. When you say it doesn't mean much, uh, are you saying if the local miners 
produce substantial volumes, oh. um, export them, bring back the currency. Oh. Are you saying those things don't if, mean if much? If the local miners, if the local miners produce a lot and export and employ people and spend the money in Guyana and all of that, uh, that means a lot. But because of the, the this so-called numbers arrived at because of the export by foreign capital and the Australians and Canadians and Bosai and, and, and Rusal and those people, because of that reason, they, they're like enclavic. The word they use here, they're enclavic in the economy. It doesn't mean much. So but that's where the number is coming from. They merely from. enclaves. Yes, yes. And that's where the big number comes from. It doesn't mean if all the Guyanese were to do all of that, then it would it would mean a lot. It create jobs. We'd have a lot of money circulating. People would be spending. You'll have spending power. But, but because this six hundred thousand ounces of gold or whatever, and it's gone out the place like that, to my way of thinking, it doesn't mean much to me. Well, perhaps um, it's interesting mm. that the Americans don't measure what is produced for foreigners. Mm. Be because they go on the gross national product, mm. they measure the earnings of Americans, mm. whether it's in the United States of mm. America mm. or Americans earning mm -hmm. like Exxon Mobil, yes. earning from the petroleum operations in Guyana, yes. is counted in the US. Because but we count it in our GDP. Yeah, we count it here. We, we as part of our GDP, I say we're doing so very well. That's correct. I would similarly with Bosai and Rusal. They just pick up this thing, put it on a barge and ship it to head office. And we count it as this, this great uh, improvement in the economy and all that. When uh, I don't all, all we really get from it, is we get employment, uh, yes. we get taxation. Well, we, no, 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 no. So hold a minute there in the taxation. In the case of... um. Bosai and Rusal, we don't get the royalties, which normally you would get in a, in a bauxite uh, situation. We don't get that. There you get couple, that all you're getting is a couple of jobs. We're not earning, as far as I'm aware, when this thing is shipped to the mm -hmm. to Russia, no big foreign currency comes back into this place. You're getting a couple of jobs there. That's all you're getting. You're getting jobs, and a lot of local people produce jobs too, like Tulsi Passat and Gafours and National Hardware and BK International, BK Quarry, they create jobs too. So uh, to say that because Bosai and Rusal create three, four hundred jobs there, so what's the big deal? A lot of our local businessmen create a lot of jobs too. And I can tell you that a lot of local businessmen don't get, don't get the, um, the concessions that the foreign people get. And there is also this issue about um, where the high salaries are paid. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Yes. So you could have a situation where you might have just 10 persons at the top mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Of, a, of a company, mm -hmm. an operation, and they get as much, if not more. Than the whole set of people here, yes. Yeah. So counting, because of the nature of our economy, with gold and bauxite and so on, it, it, it could be misleading when we do this arithmetic statistical calculation of growth. It could be misleading that you're doing so well. And when, in fact, you're not doing so well. Mm -hmm. You you wanted to talk about Article 161. You yeah. want to you want to return to that? You said everybody has spoken. Yeah, about everybody it. has spoken about it, um, and that's been triggered by so many people being not fit and proper, apparently. Yeah, yeah, but I I don't want or being it. unacceptable. Yes, but I I don't want to go over that that ground. Be because that ground has been traversed a lot by a lot of people on both sides of so this argument. So you think argument. the issue is, is dead now? No, 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 the issue is so not dead. So why you don't want to deal with it? No, I, I don't want to deal with, with, with law, 16211 and 16212. I don't want to deal with that. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to deal with a couple of facts. Okay, go on. Uh, the, the first fact is that um, Guyana has had, for a long number of years, rigged elections. That's a fact. We can't change that since 68. We can't change that. We know that. Uh, secondly... And, and you're saying right up to 2015? No, I, I don't count the 2015 elections as rigged. No. 2011? No. no. Uh, 68 to the last elections, uh, 85 
when Mr. Hoyt uh, was elected with a massive majority, bigger than the Burnham majority, and he took two extra years. That was the last big rig, 85, from 68 to 85. I did the 92 elections. So what has that got to do with Article 161? Oh, yes. President, yeah. President Granger's decision. Oh, yeah, because, because Gran Granger... President Granger. President Granger is, is setting the stage, setting the stage for the PNC government to be declared the winner in 2020, whether or not they win or lose. But that, 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 that the, can't I haven't happen. finished uh, what I'm saying. By putting in place there unilaterally the man who's to make that but, determination. But, 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 but Raymond Well it can't uh, happen. Well you have you have an elections commission. Mm, yeah. The chairman is one person. Admittedly mm -hmm. um, he has that important vote mm -hmm. because uh, the model we have for an elections commission mm. is three persons named by the government, three persons by the opposition and a chairperson selected um, or which ought to be selected by a consultative process. The chief elections office, the GCOM is responsible for the policy issues relating to elections, mm -hmm. not the, the conduct of elections mm -hmm. as such. The conduct of elections is a matter for the chief elections officer. Mm -hmm. So how come the, the appointment of the chairman the, the, is such a critical thing in the, your the, view? The unilateral appointment of Mr. Justice Patterson, which, which moves away from the old formula which we've been using for the last 25 years, changes everything. Changes everything. You cannot come now and say we have three and three. Th that has all changed. We have now uh, the chairman who is imposed there in the commission there as, as the, the, the chairman, unilaterally, everything has changed. The formula is no longer working. The, f the formula set up by Cardiff and I do But that is to do with policy. That's to do no, with no, no, no. It has not just to do with policy. The, 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 the formula was put in place with this so-called balance, we told, with the three and three and the chairman and so on, selected in this process from this list and so on, in order, in order to ensure to in order to ensure that the elections are conducted in a, in a fair and proper manner. That has changed. That has changed. And we can no longer be assured, I am no longer assured or guaranteed that these elections will be conducted properly because well, the formula, everything has well, changed. Well, let me ask you this. Mm. Um, you've been toying with this idea of, of a political party. Yes. Maybe now is a good time for me to raise it. Yes. Um, are you still in favor of that if you think that mm. this... The, 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 the game is... is um yes, predetermined, yes. Well, Rilo Dinger yesterday said on, on, on this uh, is BBC... Kenya. This is Kenya. The Rilo Dinger, leader. the opposition leader of Kenya, on BBC yesterday said, you should not go into an election if you know the results are predetermined. That is why he boycotted the, this, this second run of the presidential elections in Kenya, uh, which Kenyatta he said won again with 98% of the votes with 39% of the electorate. Rilo Dinger said that. Um, the, the, the debate on boycotting or not participating in elections in this country has been going on for quite a long time. Where do you stand on that? I, I, I think that if the elections are going to be, um, and there's a lot of Leninist material in that, incidentally, uh, it occupied a lot of time and energy of Lenin in those days, uh, before 1917. But generally speaking... He wasn't a big fan of free and fair elections, was he? <laughs> Lenin was a big revolutionary. But here, you, uh, it is my considered opinion that you should not go into an election if you know the results are predetermined, if you know the results, the election is going to be rigged. We've had rigged elections in this place in 68, and uh, I, I don't see, and it is because, it is because in the case of Guyana, that PPP continued to go into these rigged elections all the time. It took so long to, to, to solve the problem. If the PPP had, in my opinion, had boycotted the election since 68, we would not have had to wait 24 years to get a proper election. But because they keep going with these rigged elections, we had to wait 24 years. Of course, there were other external elements that contributed so, so to I'm that asking problem. You, uh, my question was slightly more direct. It wasn't yeah. about PPP, it was about Raymond Gaskin and his oh, th this idea that you've been toying with. I have, I have been um, working on this idea of a new political uh, group 
to, to challenge the, the duopoly of the PNC and the PPP that have been ruling the, the politics in this country since, I think, say, 53, uh, which is 64 years, and it's time for new political... Well, in uh, 50, 53, there, were, there was one. Well, since they split in 54, 55. 55 yeah. So there were 62 years. We have PPP and PNC, with some other parties have come along, mainly the UF and the WP and so on. But um, I still think there is need for new political groupings in this country. Uh, Despite but, the fact that you don't think we'll have free fair elections? Yes, yes. Because so what does this new grouping do? Yeah, because the, the new groupings, you don't only do election work. You do a lot of political work. The, the election work, the political work is not purely election work. There's a lot of other work other than election work that political parties can do. And if the elections are going to be rigged and predetermined, then the political grou groupings will have to do other political work, other than going into these, into rigged elections. That would be my position. So you still need the political grouping, whether you need to participate. Including the, 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 what Raymond Gaskin is thinking about. Yes, absolutely. We will, we will still do it. We will still do it. We so will, what's your plan? What's your plan? We will, we will, I don't have to disclose all that now. We'll, we'll have to see. But a but political you, you promised on this program, you had said you will have a, conti a, a continuing set of consultations. Those things yeah, you yeah. can't say anything. Yeah, we could say that. But the, 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 the strategy to be adopted in, in the face of, a, in the face of a, what we consider to be predetermined elections, that we, we can't arrive at tonight. And even if we arrived at tonight, we, we won't be able to disclose it. We'll, there's a lot of political work you can still do, even if you keep away from the elections. There's a lot of work you can do. We, we see it in Kenya, what, what Odinga is doing. You see what Raila Odinga is doing in Kenya? He boycotted the election political work. He's fighting the government there against the rigged elections. And the problem in Kenya, I don't know if you're familiar with the story, the judges ruled that the elections are not being properly conducted and they must be rerun again, which mm -hmm. they were. And Odinga was demanding that the elections, the GCOM people should be removed. The same gang of people who did the foolishness and, and um, the, the president and all these people did not agree to remove these people who had committed all this foolishness. And he said, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't run again with these same people running the election. And we'll see what happened in, in Kenya if, if, if Kenyatta could run the place. He yeah. does, he's not to begin with, he's not credible. He doesn't have any validity, and with the 39% of the turnout, um, Kenyatta got a bigger problem than Odinga, but we'll see. The we'll local see. government commission, this mm. is, this is a, a development the PPP had, had stalled on this matter for yes. years and years and years. Yes. Well, now we, we got it. The eight people are they're, they're duly what, appointed. How, how, what, how does this um, change the, the culture and the politics? Oh, of local government. Well, the, the first thing it ought to change, in my opinion, it should lead to the abolition of the Ministry of Local Government because you don't need a minister for that anymore. Now that you have a, a, a constitutional commission dealing with local government matters. As a matter of fact, I've always felt that it is contradictory or dichotomous to use the word to have a central government ministry of local government. You have the central government ministry of local government. To me, it's some quite uh, dichotomous. Well, it's, a, it's a kind of a coordinating role, nah, facilitating yeah. provision of Cent resources. Central government won't run local government. And that's why we have here a funny situation where the the REOs in the regions are, are appointed, appointed from the, the central. Yeah, because the central, they like to control things. These politicians we have here, they like to control everything. They want to control the elections too. They want to control everything. They can never agree to anything that is, that is not within their control. So therefore. why don't you, so what? Why don't you, they abolish the Ministry no, no, of Local you, Government? No. They should. What good do you see coming out of this Local Government Commission? Oh, well, I don't see anything good. Uh, because Are I, you not being too negative there? No, no, no. But, so uh, why do we have it? With the commission, you need the commission, but you don't need the minister. You need the commission for the commission to do its work. And you need a legislative framework within which the commission could work. We don't have any proper legislation to, to, to deal with it. We have the constitutional requirement, but other than that, we, we really don't know what local government and regional administration is supposed you, to do. You have no legislation for regional administration. No, that's correct. 
They, we don't have, and you need it. You need that because the, the regional administration, they are all elected people, and you don't know what they do. They, they come to the Minister of Finance annually on the pilgrimage for money to run the regions. And the Minister Bulkan was on TV, I think, tonight, and he said they're working to get a flag for each region. Each region is going to have their own flag, which is a lot of nonsense because it's not a priority. The priority for the well, regions maybe now. Maybe it's a priority for him. Maybe. Maybe. Well, I'm not surprised that the guy is so bright, you know. But the priority for the regions now and the local government is to, is revenue, to 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 get their own revenue collection, their own revenue in order, so they can run the regions and run local government without without making these pilgrimages to the Ministry of Finance all the time to beg for money. That's and part of the devolution, isn't it? Yes, so yes. We need, we need real devolution in this place. But they don't understand that they're talking about a flag. And, and Mr. Bulkan said each region, he think, is going to have their own logo and their own seal and their own nonsense. That, that, that is so idiotic. Uh, yes. It's it, that, that, ignorance. It's complete nonsense. It, ignorance. Is that what we pay ministers for? Well, to, I don't know, but think if they that's were, the thinking they were. if they're serious about local government and regional administration and devolution of power from the center to the regions, they will talk about power to the regions and the local government authority and revenue sharing, how to share the revenue. If you open a little rum shop up in Corimbatan, you have to pay the money into the central government. There's no reason, or Bartica, or, or Sororo, and let, let them. There's no reason why all those little local little shops and all those, those, those revenues shouldn't go to the local administration. You need devolution of power and power and revenue sharing. But Bolkan would not, would not be able to understand that. He, he, he would not be able to understand this idea at all. He, he does. He's talking about a flag for each region. Each region will have, we'll have 11 flags in Guyana now, not one. We'll have big competition, I guess. Oh, well, the, one of the regions has already uh, yeah. submitted this flag. Yes, re region. They already got a flag, and it's being approved. So the other flags, he said, all the other nine, ten flags will be ready by January 2018. Yes, we get 11 flags in Guyana now. We had one, and now we're getting 11. This is all ignorance. You know, yeah, ignorance. I, I, I know I know a certain <laughs> lawyer, and he loves to talk about Mickey Mouse. Yeah, yeah. This is Mickey Mouse management. This is that Mickey, it's asinine. The, 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 other, the English word is asinine. That you'll have 11 flags now, 11 logos, 11 C's, 11 this and 11 of that, and you still don't have local government, you don't have devolution of power to, these, to the regions and the local government, you don't have revenues, they don't have revenues to do the work. And this guy is talking about 10 new flags. Well, so. it must be extremely pathetic and depressing. Yeah, to well, think, I, to think that that's all that's what Volcan he said. Could come that's what with. he said tonight in TV. We're getting the 10 new flags, and one is already done, and we'll have to get the other nine. The Ministry of Local Government ought to be abolished immediately you, because you don't need it anymore. And let, this, let the Commission do its work. You don't need minister to, to do that. As a matter of fact, I've always felt it's, it's a major contradiction to have a central government minister of local government. It's a, my way of thinking it doesn't make sense. It doesn't well, make sense. Um, I don't know in which other country have a central government minister of local government. I, just, I don't know. I, I, as, you were, as you were talking about... Um, Bulkan. <laughs> minister Bulkan. Uh, um, Mr. Bulkan. Minister Bulkan, yes. Yeah. Um, this question of the National Assembly. Oh, yeah. They're coming back. They've, they've had three long, long months. months. Could you imagine that? Plenty these traveling. guys. Plenty yes, traveling. yes. They just come back from Russia, these guys. The Speaker and Prime Minister Nagamutu, uh, Mr. Ram Ber Berry, Dr. Berry, Mr. Uh, no. Sherlock. They all went to Russia to some conference, as a result of which the whole thing had to be delayed. And but the conference in Russia. I've been looking at it. It was a three-day thing. They took ten days because you know they got, got good no, per we diem. Got, we, we got relatives in London. We have to stop there. But, but, but got good per diem because you'll get the ten days per diem for a three-day conference. But the, the Russian conference ended, I think, uh, more than two weeks ago. So you need an extra two weeks, I get, to, to, to calm down after jet lag and so on. So now we get it. You know, this is totally ridiculous. Do you know, you know how much this parliament costs the taxpayers to run it? about two, over two billion a year, and these guys are not working. These parliamentarians are not working. They're do, not doing the work of the nation. They're not meeting to discuss the business of the nation. 
And this, I'm talking about all 65 of them. All 65 of them. They're not meeting to discuss the business of the nation. They take three months holiday on this summer break, and next month they're going off on the Christmas break in a couple of weeks' time. That's what you have here. It's entirely irresponsible. Entirely irresponsible. All of them. All of them. All 65. Well, you know, if you were to look at the performance of this parliament uh -huh. in terms of the number of bills passed, passed and so on, it's one of the There's least nothing, nothing. productive. Nothing, nothing. They have nothing to show. They have nothing to show. They have nothing to show and for the whole year. We come to the They have nothing to show for the whole year. And all the, li the little piece of legislation they've done, which is the, the, um, the FATF and the, the, the money laundering and all, which came from outside the country, all of that, that coming from outside of Guyana, that they did. Other than that, for the, to, to deal with critical issues facing the people of this country, they haven't done anything. This is all 65 of them. In They're having a night time. This is what I call the good life. This is what Mr. Granger called the good life. They got it right there in the National Assembly. In Three fact, month holiday for summer and going next month for Christmas. In fact, one of the MPs from the Alliance for Change, um, I, and I know we were, you and I were involved in the formation of that party time, yes. in the boardroom of yeah. Robin McCray, yeah, yes. um, had brought this a bill for for marijuana and, and, mm. and this this draconian and harsh penalty mm. if you get caught with a with, mm. I think the guys call it a split mm. three years in jail mm. they don't do anything and they block that yes yes they haven't done any important work they haven't even discussed in the National Assembly this whole question about the 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 the, 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 the so-called controversy with Venezuela and this idea of taking this matter of the dispute with Venezuela to some international court for adjudication. Well, Even that... And it's not going to the court. Well, I don't know. I see after the last meeting in New York, they agreed to continue with the good offices thing. But, but see but this matter, on. they don't even discuss that in the National Assembly. They don't discuss anything down there. Nothing at all. They behave quite often like schoolboys and schoolgirls. Who can, who can cuss and who can insult people I more? don't even think they do that. I think they're all enjoying themselves. They're having a good life. They get good pensions down there. A lot of them have some new uh, health insurance plan, which they've worked out for themselves, so they can go abroad and get um, their health benefit. They don't have to go to the Georgetown Hospital line up there like everybody else. But I think it's terrible. These two parties here, these two big parties that have been running this country from uh, was it 54 to now, uh, they've proven to be, to be, I would say, they have lost their way, for sure. They have outlived their usefulness, and it's time for new people to come forward. So, um, after 64 years. Um, viewers might think that that's a self-serving statement. It's not, it is but the truth. It is the truth. You it's see that. Uh, it is the truth. Especially, and, and these two big parties, we talk about the PNC and PPP, um, particularly after the death of Jagan, the, the, the PPP really lost its way, and after the death of Burnham, who is a man who had a lot of ideas, I think, in all fairness to him, uh, the, the PNC lost its way too, uh, since Burnham died, and the PPP lost its way since Jagan died. That is the truth. If you look at these two parties from 54, that's what you got. 63 years. 63 years in the two Well, in, in 1988 89, President Hoyt uh, Burnham. reversed and upended uh, everything. Everything that Burnham ever stood for, I believe. And, and that brought. Hoyt had stood for as a Prime Minister to Burnham. Yes. And then he, ha having done that, in comes Jag Jagan, who had opposed everything, the structural adjustment program, the ERP and everything, and he, he continued to run with it. Not only uh, Hoyt upturned Burnham, Jagan upturned himself and, and was running with the, the, the structural program and the ERP from 92. To the, yes. po to the point where Guyana um, became the country with one of the longest, longest running, running IMF programs program. in the world. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, uh, 
heart of Thorne Bonham and Jagan of Thorne himself when, when he came to power. It, it, I think it's, it's quite a disappointment. When, when the history is written of these two big parties, they, they will have to take note of all these well, things here. Well, you, you talk about what is probably easier to say what the National Assembly does because they don't do much. They don't so do anything. That would be a long list of do nothing. Yes. But this question of perhaps the most single important event or issue, mm -hmm. the discovery of oil mm -hmm. in Guyana. Yes. And Parliament is completely uninformed. Yes. They didn't even discuss it or debate it or do anything about it or say anything about it. Yes. And Parliament has been silent on this thing since 99, deliberately, since 99 when Janet Jagan, President Jagan at the time, Janet, signed the, 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 the license for exploration and she the agreement, signed the, agreement. The, agree, the PSA. Mm -hmm. uh, we never well, knew yes, about and, it. Uh, uh, for 17, and for there was a prospecting years. license as well. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, the prospecting license she signed. Uh, we never knew about this thing for 17 years. And now we, now we hear about it. Now we hear about it. So Parliament never heard about it. The people of this country never knew about it. Um, and Janet Jagan, uh, I guess advised by Sam Hines, the minister, and Barrett Jagdo, the finance minister, and Roger Luncheon, of course, the HPS and Robson Ben there. They, they did it and never told anybody for 17 years. And these, this present administration, who we are told signed a new agreement with the Exxon people in June of 2016, still continuing this policy of keeping this thing secret from the people of this country. And a lot of people arguing a lot of nonsense in the papers every day, justifying this, this question, this secrecy. I think the last thing was in today's or yesterday's papers. Although the law is clear, section four of the act is clear, that this agreement is not, is not secret. It doesn't seem to be clear to, to, to a lot Mrs. Of that. Trotman. Yes, he has yeah. said that he, yeah, yeah. he is the one who Started off by saying he's sick there. That his international advisors tell him that he can't do it because it's that uh, thing. And this man is a lawyer. He's a lawyer. I always thought though that the the advisor to the cabinet in this country in the Constitution, Article One Twelve, is the Attorney General, not no international man from some way. What Trotman talking about? And I would like well, to know. Well, it's somebody from from apparently it's someone from Kenya. Well, I don't care where it comes from. The, the constitution because, of this no, country... No, no, no. They, they say that Kenya has this experience. Um, though what you said earlier of Kenya should make <laughs> us wonder. Uh, you know what goes on in Kenya. I'll tell you about that on our next program. Experience? Are you kidding me? The constitution of Guyana said they're the attorney general of this country, advises cabinet. And Trotman is telling me somebody from outside advise he about something. What nonsense is this? Right away, Basil Wijam should, should stop him right away dead in his tracks and say, hey, Raphael, I am the Attorney General of this country, boy, 112 with the Constitution. The Constitution is clear on that. Who advises the government in this country? The Attorney General advises the government in this country, 112. So what Trotman says, somebody tell you something, he can't do it? What, 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 what Trotman think we're a pack of fools down here? If I were the Attorney General, I'd stop Trotman dead in his tracks, 112. The Attorney General advises the government of this country. 112 of the Constitution. I don't think the problem with these guys, they haven't read the Constitution. I don't think but this man is a lawyer. He's a lawyer. He's a political leader. He leads the It's not right. He's a lawyer. So he doesn't understand not Section not, 4. Or, no, he doesn't understand the, the Constitution either. He doesn't understand 112 either of the Constitution. And he says he gets some private lawyer tell you that he, we could do what we can do. Is this guy kidding me? He turned out to be not so bright, you know, just like the rest of them in my books. But I thought he was bright, but he ain't so bright. But it's, it's not a question of being bright, it's whether one is competent as well. Uh, quite well, when he's dishonest too. If he read it and he knows exactly what it says and he's telling you some other Nancy story. No, oh, it's terrible so here. So you're suggesting that he does, he knows? He, he, surely people have brought it to his attention. And, and the Attorney General knows too. 
there was a section four. It's interesting. And Nagamoto is a liar, he knows what section four. And if he, you know, Ramjetan is a liar, he must know what section four is. There are five of them in the place. Who's that? Well, Harmon is, is a big lawyer. He knows what section four of the act. You want to tell me between these five lawyers, they can't advise the president properly on the law? It's five lawyers in the place, not one. You got five of them. And I don't blame the president uh, on this matter. I blame the five of them for not advising the gentleman properly. What is the law? What is section four? It's the five of them he got there. Right? And, and the attorney general himself. Yes, as, who said, as a panel of lawyers advising He him. had the next set of advisors advising him to advise the president. And the constitution said he's the man to do the advisory but, but work. Is it acceptable? And, and you know, you're seeing some strange kind of sentiments expressed in the media oh. that all oh, these, these agreements are ironclad. Oh, yeah. yeah. These, these are national agreements. Yeah, yeah. I have everybody. Lots of countries, mm -hmm. you have to take that agreement to the National Assembly, Assembly for yes, approval. Yes, you have to, yes, yes. So why is Trotman getting away with this? Well, I think Trotman is getting away with it the same way Jack Dio got away with it in 1999. It's, it's a tradition of secrecy. No, but we did, no, you can say we did not know of that 1999 agreement. But this time we know. We know about what well, we don't know about the tra the agreement that we know. He, we know thing. he signed one. He signed one. They don't even want to tell you about the signing bonus that we told was paid at the signing of, of this of this new agreement. And Trotman keeps saying, Mr. Trotman, that our cabinet will advise him and he's going to be guided and all, all this nonsense this nonsensical talk about this new agreement has been signed about the terms of the new agreement, about the signing bonus in the new agreement, and what we're going to get, what this country is going to get from all that, up to now, we still don't know. You're only hearing a lot of things, 50% of something, and 50% of this, and what is the cost all and the profit all and all, but you still don't know because we haven't seen the document to read it and study it. And I was looking at the, at the, I was looking at the agreement that Janet Jagan signed with them. Because there was some propaganda in the papers this week where Exxon is teaching people how to deal with spills. I don't know if you don't read papers like me. They had some teaching people how to deal with a spill. I think this thing happened at Splash Mins or something. And I've always been worried about this thing. What happens if you have a big spill out there? What happens if you have a big spill out there? Now, out there, we have the fisheries too, the, the, the grounds of the fisheries. Yes. A big spill will, will damage the fishery sector of the economy. So I went back to this Janet Jagan agreement, what she signed. And it said it in that document there that she signed. It says here on Article 2806, and tell you what it says in 28, that the guarantor, which is the company, must notify the minister in the event of any emergency or accident affecting the environment and to take prudent and necessary action. Full stop. Here what it goes on to say in 2806. If the guarantor... Now, when you say 2806... Six of the, of the agreement that, that Janet Jagan signed with now, them. Now, let's get this clear. That's not the same agreement that is now in force. No, no. No, but I'll, I'll tell you why I'm quoting this one. It says, if the guarantor does not act promptly to clean up the pollution... The minister may then take the action necessary to do so and to bill them for the cost. In order, the minister must go and do the cleanup, according to this, 28 or 6. I want to know from Mr. Trotman, in this new agreement that he has with these people, what, what is the story here about cleaning up of spills? Because in the old agreement that Janet Jagan signed, it says that if these people don't do it, minister must do it. But well, surely that could, it can hardly be even talking about a minor spill. We don't have that capacity as a country. Yeah, yeah. So the whole idea that the, anybody would sign such ignorance is beyond me. That if, if, the, if the oil company don't deal with the spill, the minister must deal with it and send the bill to them. How can a minister of the government, a political man, clean up, clean up a spill? So I want to know from Mr. Trotman, in this new agreement he has signed with these people, what has happened to Article 2806 of the old agreement that Jana Jagan signed with them. I want him to tell me that. And it might be interesting to point out, and relevant to point out, Article 2806 uh -huh. 
is based on a model petroleum agreement mm, yes. that is given to all oil companies. Mm, yes. So you would not, do you think you are too far from the mark that there is in Trotman's agreement mm. something similar to this Article 20? Yes, uh, yes. I, I would like to know from he's been able to do anything. But there's another thing in this, in this agreement that, that uh, Janet Jagan signed with them, dealing with insurance. And f where can you claim or who you can claim against if there were to be a spill that damaged the environment and the fisheries and what have you. And it says in this, in the, in the agreement, I call it the Janet Jagan agreement, eh, that Exxon could use an Exxon insurance company to cover this risk. It says there, it provides for that. Yes. You, so that if you have a claim against Exxon for this spill, assuming, then you can go to the Exxon insurance and put in a claim against Exxon. I don't know how that works. I really don't know how that works. But it's in that agreement that Janet Jagan signed. And I would like to know from Mr. Trotman if he has kept this nonsense in the new agreement that he signed. I would like to know from him. What is the insurance company that is covering the risk of spill out there? If you look at the, the Angola agreement and the other African agreements which I have to look at, it is not uh, permitted that the, that the oil company and its insurance company, its own subsidiary will carry the risk. But in this particular case, we have allowed the Janet Jagan people there, Roops and Ben and them, that the Exxon insurance company could cover the risk for spills in, out there. So it's like you're going to Exxon to make a claim against Exxon. I don't know how that will work. So I want to know from Mr. Trotman what is the position in the new agreement that he has signed with these people? We need to know that. Because but, spills, but, occur, but spills occur every day globally in the oil and gas business. Every day you get spills. But nothing, not, not uh, these spectacular spills like the Deepwater Horizon no, or the Exxon Valley. No, but no, you don't get spills. We get small spills all the time. You get, if you go back to um, Steve, this book on Exxon, Steve Moore, Cole. Cole's book, yes. he says there, Every day, globally, in the industry, there are spills. Small skills, uh, spills, medium spills, and large spills. Every day, every day, you get spills. We're going to get spills out there. We are going to get spills. You can't avoid it. it it's not a deliberate thing, but the thing, these spills happen. There is, a, there is a talk tomorrow, coincidentally, on, on the environment, oil and the environment, at Moray House. It's a public, it's a public lecture. Are you planning to be there to raise some of these questions? No, the no, panel? I'm not planning to be there. There, there are a lot of these, um, a lot of these talks and uh, seminars and workshops and people coming in to talk about all these things. We had the this is a local one. In fact, we had a gentleman coming from Ghana. We have a lot of trainees down here telling you what to do and what to avoid and what not to do. But uh, the, the, you can talk how much you like. But the bottom, li the bottom line is, we need to see this agreement to see what it says. Now, we need to see it and read it and study it. It's as simple as that. Do you take any hope or comfort from the fact that last week, Guyana was admitted as the 53rd member mm -hmm. of the Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative, which essentially seeks to bring transparency to the extractive sector, not only on petroleum, but on, on, on gold, forestry, uh -huh. mining, and, all, and other similar activities? No, I'm, I'm not supportive of that. Uh, if you look at the 53 countries there, you will see that the big countries like Saudi Arabia and Kuwait and, and the, the Russia and Canada, they're not in there, and Germany, they don't want to be in that thing to begin with. Secondly, on the board of directors of the, the EITI people, you see the Exxon people are there. They mm -hmm. are a company very prominent inside there. But besides that, this whole question of disclosure, what we have to disclose to these people, all our claims about forestry and marine and oil and gas and all of that, I don't think we should go there to disclose all these things to these people anyhow. Um, but I thought you were just arguing for disclosure. No, 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 I'm not in favor. No, so no, no. So don't, don't give the contract either? 
No, no, this close to the people of this country. Trotman has to disclose to the people of this country what deal he signed with Exxon, not for Guyana to disclose to EITI in Norway information about our country. No, there's, a, there's two diff but different things. But if the information things. is out there, it, it, it still is it's available. It's not out there. It's not out there. And in any event, this, this deal we have here with SO, it's called SO. SO. Which Exploration Exxon, and production. Which is, which is, which is Exxon plus Hess plus Nixon, which is the Chinese people. And China is not a member of, of EITI. Yes. And you're not going to get any disclosure from the Chinese about nothing up there. So I don't know how it will work because China is a partner in this project here. I, I'm not supportive of, of Guyana joining that thing. And we, we see now, although they've joined the thing, they still don't want to be transparent well, with it, the people of this country. Well, it would be interesting because surely Exxon, and, and there is a distinction between Exxon and, and SO. SO, yeah. SO is the operator in uh -huh. Guyana, oh, yes. along with, with Hess, Hess and Nixon and, and the Chinese. And Sinoc. Uh -huh. Yes. Now, if in fact the EITI operates, uh -huh. then surely Exxon Mobil, which is operating in other countries, uh -huh. ought to be have been disclosing some of the, this information. No, well, the way EITI because works apparently, is that... No, no, the, 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 the obligation on disclosure is on the, the, the operators. Both sides have to disclose. The government of, of Guyana will disclose what it gets from Exxon. Exxon will disclose what it pays here. And then some big accounting firm reconcile. will come and check, uh, reconcile this thing. It, what, needs what a bigger, they, it needs a bigger accounting firm. firm. Huh? What they say they give you and what we say we get from them. I don't know why you need an accounting firm from outside. So we give you five and one person said we receive five. The, in, in Guyana, the Auditor General of Guyana audits what we get and what we're supposed to get. We don't need no international firm to come and tell us nothing. The contract is there, it goes to the Auditor General, and he checks the books of Guyana. The Constitution says he's the man to do it, to see if we're getting what we're supposed to get, not EITI. He, he's the man. The Auditor General of Guyana is the man that audits the books of this country. What sec article is that, I wonder, of the Constitution? Yeah. It, it you remember, right? I, of the Auditor General is the man to check that thing, not EITI. But in this EITI arrangement, you have to tell them what you pay them, and they tell you what they pay you, and somebody comes in to check if this thing is right. It's all nonsense. And that EIT thing is controlled by the big oil companies. That EITI thing in Norway is controlled by the big oil companies. That's what it is. And a lot of the big com companies of the world and the big countries don't go there at all. They just don't go there. Russia, Canada, all them ain't going. Germany ain't going there. But but isn't isn't Norway a big player? Isn't it? Yeah, Norm Norway is the only player there. Norway, the United States, and the UK are the only three developed countries in that thing, and the other fifty countries are all kind of little Mickey Mouse people all over the place. All the, mo most of them corrupt and they don't know what the hell they disclose. We were just reading this week about Obiang son in, in Paris. They oh, just twi twenty nine um, high quality cars, yeah. And a hundred and ten million uh a hundred and ten million euro euros the French coach just take from him. That's, 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 that's e Equatorial Guinea. Guinea. His old man is the big boss man there. That's Exxon Mobile Country. Equatorial Guinea is Exxon Mobile Country. Yeah, but it's not the oil company. You can't blame the oil company. The, the, the whole but place is corrupted by oil. The whole place is corrupted by oil. And all them in EITI, it doesn't mean anything. The whole Exxon Mobile, if you read uh, Steve Cole's book about it, is a corrupting place. They work all over the world, you know, they even corrupting Mr. Putin. I don't know if you read about him, you're going to know what the story. There's a corrupting place. I thought Putin in your books was incorruptible. No, that, no, <laughs> no, no, he, uh, I won't say that, no, I won't say that. But he, he, Exxon, he and his oligarchic friends? Because, you, you know, in the book, there's a thing, Putin didn't want to sign the agreement with Exxon mm -hmm. uh, on the Siberian oil. That's what's correct. Uh, up, up there with Rosneft. And Tillerson was the, the man at the time in Exxon Mobile. He's the boss of, at the time. And, but Exxon Mobile, it appears, is the company with the technology. 
yes. to get that, that thing out there in Siberia. Even the rest of them in Abel, Hess, British Patrol, BP and all them. And, and Tillerson told Putin, look, Vladimir Vladimirovich, you better sign this paper or I'll walk from here. And he signed it. He signed it. That tells you about the power of Exxon Mobil. Nobody well, makes Putin sign paper, but Tillerson, Rex Tillerson, made him sign the paper. Uh, the, the same book, um, Steve Calls book, book, Steve Calls book, was was saying that if you were to take to convert, if you were to equate the GDP of yeah, a country yeah. and the turnover of this company, mm -hmm. then Exxon Mobil is a, is bigger than. Many, many it's, majority it's bigger, of countries. It's bigger than 150 countries of it's the world. world yeah. Exxon Mobil, if you were to convert it into GDP, is bigger than 150 countries in the world, out of the 193 countries that are yes, members yes. of the United Nations. Exxon is bigger. Exxon is bigger. Okay. And they, they change up a lot of things in Africa where they operate. A lot of things. I call it Exxon people. Ex Exxon run things down there. But, but Exxon normally gets a, a, a bad rap publicly, mm. yet it is said that of all the oil companies, and the, the, the minister, Raphael Trotman, said that we are lucky that we are dealing with a company like Exxon. We could have had mo really bad oil I companies. don't know into that. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. We'll see. We'll get to see. Yeah, but we, it, it's in coquette. Yeah, but well, we'll, we'll get a chance to see. I'm not going to pronounce on that. But you uh, seem to be pronouncing on Exxon. Ba based on what I'm reading, because Exxon operates in many countries all over the world, and based on what I'm reading about, about the experience and their behavior throughout the world, I'm, I'm getting an opinion about them. But in Guyana, we'll, we'll still see. I have my own views what will happen here. Well, but quickly on the public service you, thing. You, you know my view on, on oil, and everybody needs yeah, to... Yeah, but I, everybody, every man, every woman, and child <laughs> needs to be in oil, yes. You believe that? <laughs> well, no, no, no. We need the, to uh, inform the, ourselves. Yeah, yeah but we, we need to inform ourselves. The entire country needs to be informed about this thing, especially what we can get out of it. And, and the government is preventing the people of this country from getting to find out what's going on and what we're going to get out of it, which we need to know. Free collective bargaining. Now, we've had Patrick Yard, um, who is a member of the Public Service Commission. Not anymore. No, that's come to an end. But he's still mean. functioning, apparently. May no, he found. No, no, no. There's no public service. It's, it's ended. It's as the new one hasn't been appointed. It's ended. The Public Service Commission has ended and Teaching Service Commission has ended. not been reappointed yet. And yet we're having talks with these two with the teachers and with the public No, but the government as employer c can have talks with, the, with their employees in yes. order to prevent that. The, the, the collective agreement is between the government and, 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 the, and the union. But do you think the, the, the union should be pushing for the, for the um, appointment of, of those commissions? No, no, no. Uh, no the, the problem with the union is that the government is imposing the, the, the wages on them, as was done in the past by the previous yeah. administration. The, the union should be pushing for conciliation and arbitration. That's what they should be pushing for. Not for a whole set of new meetings with the same minister and Mr. Harmon and all of them. The, the collective agreement says once there's a dispute, you go to conciliation, you go to arbitration. That's what the collective agreement says. And the union should be pushing for that. Well, the But they're not. They're not. They want to see the president. They want to see Mr. Harmon. They want to see the minister. They want to see th this body and th that body. The collective agreement is clear. Once you have a dispute, you go to conciliation the next stage. If you can't resolve, you go to arbitration. The, way the, the way the PSU went to arbitration with, with Armstrong many years ago and was able to win, I think. A 29% yes, at Yes, yes. In those days. 99 strike. I was involved on the periphery of the strike. And we should go to the conciliation, go to the arbitration, argue the position. You think, you think our country is ready for that kind of um, trade union activity? Well, we did it before. The, 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 trade, the union went before. They went to arbitration. They went with Armstrong and the one. It's not whether we're ready for that's it. That's 18 what years the, ago. That's what the agreement says. Yeah, but they're not doing it. Gonna the do? unions don't want to do it, but that's what the agreement says. So the unions, because the union, the leadership of the unions, I don't know about the teachers, you don't know, but... Yard Union, since 99, 
he has accepted all the impositions that he's had over the years. He's, because he's not a fighter. He's not a fighter. It's as simple as that. Your trade unions, you've got to fight for your membership. You've got to fight for your workers. That's what trade unions are all about. And the agreement says you go to conciliation, you go to arbitration. That's what it says. What do you think of the state of trade unionism in Guyana? Piss poor. Piss poor. It's on the decline. The trajectory I'm is... I'm not sure that kind of language on... No, it's no, plain talking. No, not plain talk. It's, colo it's known as it's proper colloquial language here. Um, it's, it's, it's on the decline. The, the trajectory is, is not looking good. And, and uh, the government, this present government that had, had, had joined the unions in condemning the, the unilateral and arbitrary imposition of wages on the teachers and the public service in the past, they are doing the same thing. Why should but people trust politicians when you have all of this? That's why I say coming back to the question from 54. After 63 years, we need new political leadership in this country because the PNC and the PPP now, they turn out to be the same thing. We need new leadership. And, and you think the Rambo party, the Raymond Gaskin party, whatever it's going to be, will provide that kind of new culture and leadership? Well, the Rambo party ain't going to be like the two of them, let me tell you. No, we're different people. And tomorrow, and on Tuesday, we're speaking about this at the, on November 7th, at, our, at the National Library, what we're about, if, if we get the support, what we're about. We're different from all them people. Absolutely, absolutely. Tuesday we'll speak about it at the National Library at 5 o'clock. I don't want to be cynical. It's more easily said than none. No, no, no. It, no, it's not, it's not easy. Hey, easy. No, it's easy to say. It's I, easy I, to say. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not easy. It's not an easy task. It's extremely difficult in this place here. So next Tuesday, at 5 o'clock, you come Public here Library. at the National Library on whether we should go forward and, and do this new political organization that we have in mind. Uh, and since you've done your, your uh, marketing speech, let me do mine. Yes. Morey House Trust has this um, public discussion tomorrow afternoon at 6 o'clock. All oil and the environment. I think it's going to be a very interesting discussion. And you're invited. Raymond, thank you very much thank for appearing you. in Plain Talk. Operators and viewers, thank you. Good night. And I'll see you next week.